Today we're going to be talking about the things we said we would never do, whether to God or to other people. And he has us do. He has us end up doing so many things. Like if you have something in your soul right now that's like a piece of sand that's gritting against you or grating against you, and you don't think that's going to turn into a pearl that God uses, you are wrong, my friend. You are wrong. Because personally, I have seen this and many of my close friends have seen this. That when we have a do not list, like I would never be on Christian television. I'd never write a book about finance. I'd never write a book on dating. Hello, these are things that I have now done, even though I said I would never do these things. I remember one of the first times God spoke to me and said, I want to you know, create inside of you a writer. I was a little kid. And I, I dreamed of the novels I would write and the beautiful books about lives. And I've, I want to do biographies and these kinds of things, autobiography. And, uh, you know, I was dreaming with God. And then my first book I wrote, I was pretty proud of it. It was based on encounter and really identity. But the first book I wrote that was really going to go mass market, I was with the publisher and they said, we really feel like you're supposed to write this book, Keys on His Economy, that's based on an encounter that you had about the economy system of heaven. And I'm like, oh, that's a finance book. It touches all kinds of money things. It is based on an encounter. And plus it's an encounter. And I'd already given the whole thing away for free online. I was like, I don't know you guys. And I said, we really want to challenge you. And I prayed about it and I felt like God said, do it. Because if you get it into a book form, more people will read it than people who read it on the internet. People are not digital readers yet. And this is back in 2005. And so he said, get it into a book form. And I was like, oh, this hurts. I don't want it to be known as the keys of his economy guy, the, the, you know, the finance guy. And that's been the story of my life. I don't want to be known as the prophetic poster boy. I don't want to be known as the Christian television guy. I have told the Lord so many times, I don't want to be that person. But what I found is that as you obey God and you follow him, when you obey him and do these things that you don't necessarily want to be known for, that and you're trying to hold out for the best or you're trying to hold your reputation so you're not affiliated with something that is badly branded, what happens is you get the opportunity to reform what people think about the very thing you don't like. And usually you don't like it because you don't like the way it's been branded or there's a party that can't own that identity of that because it doesn't feel like you. But if God's calling you to something, it means that you get to be you in it and you're going to change it. You're going to change that system. I'm, I know a friend of mine who said, I, I don't feel called to civil rights and and he's an African-American guy. And people kept giving that word, you're going to be known for civil rights. And he did not want to do this as a college professor. He was like, I'm, I'm fighting to not be involved in that conversation. Like, bless that conversation, but I don't want to be known in that conversation. And years into it, the Lord finally speaks to him after he marries a white woman. They have, you know, two beautiful children. And they're in a mixed marriage. And he realized, I have a voice about this now. There's something that I need to say about this. I never wanted to do this, but now I want to write the book. Now I want to share my voice about this because he had to, because the message had matured inside of him and he didn't feel like he was coming under, you know, any of the extremes of the civil rights movement. He felt like he was able to be right in the middle of his subject that he felt called to. I think some of you are watching, like maybe you're a filmmaker and you're like, I would never make a faith-based film. Or maybe you're, you know, a TV producer and you're like, I would never work on a video game. But the reality is, is that God oftentimes puts an edginess in our hearts towards something because he wants to get it, catch our attention in that area and actually use us in that very genre that we're irritated by. <laughs> and I've seen this happen with friends. Like I would never be friends with that person. And all of us can be that judgmental. I've been that judgmental. I would never be friends with that person. Hi, best friend. Hi, new best friend. You could ask some of my closest friends if I would have picked them to be my friends and if they would have picked me. And there would be a big N-O. There would be a huge N-O. As a matter of fact, Hona, many of you have heard me talk about him. He's been on this uh, your prophetic journey series and Hona and I didn't even like each other for, for the first year and a half and he lived with me I invited him to live with me to from Ecuador he lived and went to our Bible school and I thought I don't really vibe with this guy I don't know I don't connect to him and I was a little irritated by him I thought he was a little selfish and a little entitled and he wasn't at all like I just didn't really know him I didn't know his heart and after we lived together for a while I didn't realize that God was putting me together with one of the best people in my life and there's many other people that God's brought me into their sphere or their life that I would have been like, no, mm -mm, I'm not going to connect to them. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in their sphere. I'm in their life. And it opened doors of opportunity to me. It opened perspective to me. I would have never had and I love perspective. It opened adventures I would have never gone on. Even coming to Los Angeles, I remember just thinking, would I ever go to Los Angeles? I don't think I'd ever go to Los Angeles. I mean, I, growing up, like LA was kind of a black marked place from if you're from Orange County or other parts of California, and God calls me to LA, and I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I can't believe you're calling me this late in life. I was in my middle to late 20s, and I didn't get here until uh, 2006, so I knew for 10 years before I was coming, and I thought, this is so unusual that you're calling me to a place that I would have never chosen to go myself, 
And you've given me such a passionate love that I would die for this place. I would die here as a martyr here if God called me to because of what he's shown me he wants to do in this land. And so I just think many of us, we get these arguments with God and we we think we know better than God. And we think that the thing that we would be frustrated to do, maybe it's a career path, maybe it's a friendship circle, maybe it's a ministry style or a ministry thing that you don't want to do. It could be as simple as like working in children's ministry at church. I would never want to do that. And then all of a sudden you do it because you obey God and it changes your capacity in life. You know, and I think we need to obey and surrender when we have this huge agenda. And especially if we're aggravated, if you have an aggravated agenda, say, here you go, God, you probably want to use me somewhere here and I give it to you. And I, I just think it's so beautiful when we walk with God, because for me personally, I look back at so many of the things that I thought would be more fun or would be more in line with my core values for what I'd want to do. And Christian television was not one of them. And now I have two Christian TV shows you know, and podcasts. I never thought I'd do a podcast. And I'm one of the best well-known podcasts in the Christian world right now. You know, To do a YouTube series on the prophetic instead of on video gaming or something, I never thought I would do that. I thought it would be like a Twitch streamer as an older guy and have fun doing that. But I'm doing YouTube for you. And I love it. I love who I get to meet through this. I love how it expands who we are as people and internally, not just expands influence or whatever, but it expands me and my revelation of God because I get to meet you. Yes. So be open. That's the bottom line is be open. And and don't try and use reverse psychology on God. I've done it. I've said, I would never own a private plane, God. I would never. <laughs> I would never be a billionaire. You know, it doesn't work. He's, he's not a God who could be tricked. Uh, he's way smarter than you. But there's certain things that he's planted into your life or seasons for you to do that are actually, they feel a little counterculture and it really kills your flesh. I mean, if you're like me and you're stubborn, you need God to do some of these things because it changes your internal voice and your internal character. Like he's forming us from the inside out. And so he gives us outside, external opportunities sometimes that actually cause us to become a version of ourselves we could have never become if we were just, you know, self-made men and women. We're not self-made men and women. We said, God, you can have my whole life. I've been at that worship time where I'm like going, you can have it all, Lord. You can have it all. And he took me seriously and he's taking you seriously. So don't get discouraged when he says, oh, remember when I, you said I can have it all? Well, I want this area. And you're like, no, I've saved that for this. This is what would be cool. This would be sexy. This would be amazing. And, and God's like, no, 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 I want you to do this. And it's very normal or it's being used for him versus being used for you. And you're like, okay, I'll do it. But you learn so much about his nature and about humanity. I've fallen in love with so many people and I've had my heart expanded for, for just millions of people. And I'm serious about that for millions of people who live in LA and for, who go after social justice and who go after entertainment. Those are my tribes and I would have never even known them the way I've gotten to know them if it wasn't for me saying yes to God and him providing unusual opportunity in places I would not go. And I would encourage you to do the same. Well, some of you have been on these kind of, you know, adventures with God that you wouldn't have chose. He's led you in ways you wouldn't have gone. Share those down below and also tag somebody who needs to hear this message right now that what they're doing matters, even if it's not something they want to do, that God many times leads us as a good father. I didn't want to go to school when I was growing up and it was good that I went to school. And there's many things you're doing right now that you didn't want to do, but it's so good for you. And tag somebody if you can relate to it or share this with someone around you if it makes sense to you. Bless you guys. Oh,